AM Best is introducing its national scale rating to five countries, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam, and is requesting comments from the insurance industry and other interested parties on its updated draft criteria procedure. Here to discuss the proposed criteria is Greg Carter, Managing Director, EMEA, and Asia Pacific. And Greg, could you give us a primer on the national scale rating and how it maps from AM Best global rating scales? Certainly, John. Let, let me start by just a reminder of, of our global rating scales and exactly what we're measuring there. So the global rating scale you refer to is the, the rating that, that most rating users will be familiar with, and that's the issuer credit rating, or ICR, as we as we call it. And that is a, a, a measure of a com- insurance company's ability to meet its financial obligations, and, and that is globally comparative. So an A- minus on a US company means the same thing as an A- minus on a, on a French company, a Japanese, Indonesian company, wherever you are in the world, it's, it's globally consistent. Now, a national scale rating is different. It's a, an opinion of the, the relative financial strength of an insurance company within its own territory. So it's a, a relative assessment compared to all of the other insurers in that territory. And that isn't necessarily the same then for each country. So an A- minus on a national scale rating, say, in, in Egypt, will not be the same as an A- minus on the national scale rating in Indonesia. Um, so it's important to recognize that there will be different distributions of national scale ratings. They won't all map across to the same issuer credit ratings on a global basis. So how does the NSR benefit the types of insurance markets that you just described? Well, that's a good question. I mean, you could say, why are we doing this? Well, I think it's important to to recognize that country risk does have an impact on the ICRs, the issuer credit ratings, for companies operating in the countries where we see higher country risk. So that's the the countries that carry country risk tiers three, four, and five. And what we see there, the impact of that country risk, it means that the average ratings in those territories typically fall a little bit further down the ICR scale than ratings on average in CRTs one and two. And the purpose of the national scale ratings really is to reduce the impact of of those country risk effects to produce a broader distribution. So again, what we do see is in those CRTs 3, 4, and 5, those territories where we see higher levels of country risk, we see a a little bit of bunching of the issuer credit ratings, the ICRs. And another factor we often see is in those territories, the companies that currently come forward for ratings with us are normally the stronger companies within those territories. So you, you get a little bit of compression within the rating scale on the ICR basis. So if you move to the national scale rating, which which uses within the national scale, uses ratings from the low point of C up to a high point of AAA, then you should get a greater differentiation, a broader distribution of ratings to, um, to, to really differentiate between companies. Looking at these countries opened up to the NSR, what characteristic or commonalities do you see that played into the timing of the expansion? Well, as I mentioned, we're focusing on territories that are country risk tiers three, four, and five. And these are all territories that present heightened political, economic, and financial system risk. And uh, that's what's causing that compression in the ICRs that I mentioned earlier. So for those territories where ICRs would have been under pressure, the national scale rating gives scope for a a broader outcome and greater distribution. Now, we do think that many of those territories have have suffered significantly through the the COVID-19 pandemic and the slowdown in economic activity. We're also seeing that in the post-COVID environment, the inflationary period that we're facing now, pretty much on a global basis, is also likely to cause those countries probably more pain than the more well-developed CRT 1 and 2s. And we would expect those pressures that um, that really do shine through through the country risk process to be continuing for some time to come for those territories. As markets become more developed, Greg, does the NSR still hold value? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, I think with, you know, with, within many of these markets that we're looking at, those, those pressures of political, economic and financial system risks, they will continue to exert an influence for many years to come. 
And uh, therefore, we expect there'll be a long-term desire to see that relative differentiation between companies. And this is exactly what the national scale rating will provide. Greg, so glad you could join us today. Thank you, John. That was Greg Carter, Managing Director, EMEA and Asia Pacific. And I'm John Weber for AM Best TV.